Um, yeah, so I'm going to start off by asking Andrew, who talked very passionately about the um, kind of conceptual artist's vision of drawing. Uh, and I'm just wondering what you think of the more, you know, conventional thing of drawing in terms of, you know, drawing, like when people draw a portrait and there's real observation behind it, or for instance, uh, you know, when, when children draw spontaneously or, you know, drawing as a, um, you know, as, as, as a more, fin you know, finished thing. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm very, uh, I, I, in a way, all the things that I talked about, although they have a kind of conceptual um, framing, all of them are rooted in this um, extraordinary desire to translate the world through the means that you have. And the means that you have is your hand and your eye. And uh, I see it, I, ha I have a two-year-old who, who, who draws obsessively every day. Um, and she tells me what something is, of course it looks nothing like the thing that it is. Um, but I'm, I'm fascinated by her desire to want to make that translation and to materialize what she sees. And I see that as a, a, a continuing um, uh, obligation for the artist. That the artist is, is constantly trying to bring into their world um, in material means, through the drawing, the world that they observe around them. One manifestation that I think is a very contemporary version of this, and we, we, I, I don't think it's actually conceptual as such, is what I call fandom. That is to say, you know, what do we do to, to have a piece of it? Um, and I think there are things in our culture that we share, that we own jointly. And, there are, and, and, and they are these cultural artifacts. And one of the ways that we, if you like, join the club is through drawing. And I think the drawing is a very material, um, basic, Action. I mean, I, I, it, it's interesting because you know I, I teach in an art school where drawing is quite low on the list of priorities these days. But I suspect that what happened in art schools is that they they threw the baby out with the bathwater, and the hunger to have that facility and that dexterity re returned, like the return of the repressed. That it, actually students started to ask for it. We stopped teaching it and they started to have a need for it. So I see it as a kind of really fundamental daily practice. But you don't see that, that, that it's superseded when people do life drawing or, or do portrait drawing. Do you, do you, do you still see the, that there's something aesthetically wonderful in that? If you, if you were to walk around this art fair oh, and see totally. something like a, a drawing of a nude done by ah. someone at art school or a I love drawings of nudes. Um, yeah. I, no, I, I, totally. Yeah. I just think that the, 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 the legacy of kind of, if you like, conceptual practice, it has taught us to understand what the mechanisms are yeah. when you look at the drawing of the nude. Yeah. As long as we had Carol Schneeman taught us to see who was doing the looking and who was but doing this the is, making. this is John Berger. I mean, this, this uh, ways of seeing, I was very mindful when you were talking earlier with uh, Carol E. Schneeman, that this, this uh, the, the problem, the ethical problem of who's looking at whom doing what was the first thing that I wanted to highlight, but also going back to this question about convention, what we consider conventional drawing or the genres, or whether it's a still life, a, a landscape, a portrait, or uh, the, the genealogy of a, of a chicken, or a first growth tree, or sitting in your studio obsessing about drawing. I think this, this obsessional <coughs> urge, which your two-year-old has, which we all have, gets shifted in us as we get older. It gets beaten out of us, and we're told we, we can't draw, so we have to learn to write. And we can't write, so we have to learn to take pictures. But what this, this problem of making sense of the world, which is what a child wants, you know, the, the little ones think that they are big because they identify with their parents, but this need for some kind of likeness or some sort of order or some sort of safety. And I would go back to this issue, which I was very happy that you brought up. Three times you used the word ethics. And I think that um, 
uh, one, of the, one of the reasons that I wanted to get all of the people on this panel to talk together on this panel be was because each of you in your practices, curatorial, teaching, curating, writing, art, 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 for me this uh, through line in all of your oeuvre is this obsessive push towards making sense of the world within a construct in which ethics is paramount. And I would, uh, you gave very short shrift to, in fact, what's remarkable about your work, which I've had the pleasure of seeing over a long period of time, and in fact, maybe in the films, this issue of time, the passage of time, but this articulation of your own panic with the repetition and the obsession of mark making, you know, we're all in this, we're all in this, mob in this loop, in this endless loop of our own, uh, the, the, the issue of what we are nervous about, what we are seeing, what we're, how we try to make sense. It, and it has to do, I think, a lot with what comes out in a certain urgency of a time, mm. because I think the way of drawing it out of us artists or writers uh, in a certain moment of history and time, it's where uh, you, you really check your materials on where are you on. And, and actually what I got the biggest lesson about it is from uh, drawings done by, in caves. Mm -hmm. Because Good. in caves, uh, and I saw, I was in, in Canada and I was, we were on a little boat and in a fjord that nothing, only trees. And then there's a big boulder, and on the boulder there's a fish, a drawing of a fish. But the artist that drew it, we don't know how he managed to get there. Not only that, he didn't draw it on a flat thing. He chose a boulder that does that. And suddenly the fish is swimming, and we are underneath it. This moment informed me, it's like, it was incredible. Because the knowledge and the urgency there was uh, uh, kind of translated in my head as something so fundamentally urgent. I don't know what was it, when it was done. And this allowed me also to go and, and ask how I work with my materials and, and grounds and surfaces. That why I insist always to really, really very precise, be very just about on what I'm going to do my next. But it, just in relation to, to, to that notion of ethics, and if I can pick up on uh, from Esther's work, and you, you, um, thank, thank you for talking um, about the monument against fascism, because for me that is, that also answers James's question, because making a mark on that monument, inviting not yourself to make marks, but inviting the public communities, in fact, constituting communities by making marks. That drawing can be so fundamental to our existence and so, if you like, democratic. We understand it. We, we, we all know what drawing is. We all make... Everybody draws. Yeah, everybody draws. And so <coughs> everybody can make their mark, can sign their name, can be part of the work. And that seems to me absolutely at the, that's the fundamental ethical moment. Mm -hmm. That to make a mark, to make a commitment in the world that doesn't go away, it may sink into the ground, but let's it's not still it's there. there. It's there. Yeah. It's there. Yeah, it's inside. And in the memory of and everybody memory. that touched or didn't. Touch. Absolutely. You can knock down monuments, you can burn books, but they still exist in the memory. You can make, yeah. every mark you make resists. And, and survives in some way. But this is interesting with regard to uh, Kuhn's practice, because when you're looking at the electrical cords, and then your last comment, well, what about the umbilical cord? Because in a sense, this point. transmission is the antidote to the erasure. And, and the obsessional marks of, of you filming in the, you know, it, it, this is about witness. This is about bearing witness and continuity and transmission. And the drawing is the urgency of, of, of not, not to be erased. It's this activity not to be erased. Yeah, um, you didn't talk I, about your, 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 your 
drawings that you do with, with feathers and things like yeah. that. I yeah. mean, are, are those spontaneous or do you plan them ahead? I mean, unfortunately, we don't have an image of it here. But yeah, because, uh, well, well, I think that the drawing is very essential for, for your grow. If you feel that you have to grow, you start to draw. And that, that's, that's because you, you sense a lot of things, and it's about ethics, of course, because you sense a lot of things in the world, and then, right. and then you start to draw. Hmm. And then it comes spontaneously. All my drawings, all my paintings, it's, without, it's actually without thinking, but it's, uh, th there is a lot of intellect behind. But you don't have to think anymore because you already got it in your brain. And so, in one way or another, your body is pushing it out. And when the body is pushing that out, you know that you're, that you're making a step. Because, you know, I, th I think it's like, if I'm thinking back now, eh? because now, now I'm, I'm making huge projects with communities, bringing chickens into Africa, into, into South America, making forms, they, 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 and they, they are art pieces. I mean, they are, they are real. Yeah, they're they are breeding inside. They are part of projects. Uh, to help people in the communities, but it comes all from the freedom of art. Yes. It comes all from the freedom of working. And you start as an individual, and there I'm, I'm, I'm completely agree with what you say. I'm st I started in, 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 in the cellar, you know, uh, down, down, down. And that was like a feeling of breaking out. But that moment of breaking out, you, you, you find the relationship to the society. Mm. Because you, there is something in your body that, that said, now I like to test what I'm doing uh, to the society. And that's the same thing as the child who said, mommy, mommy, I made, look what I made, you yeah. know? This is, this is that, but then at a certain moment you talk to Mother Earth. I mean, f no, first, first to the society, then to Mother Earth. This is, this is really a step that you have to make. And you can't make it from the very beginning. It's, it, it's a kind of uh, road path that you, ha that you have to draw. But it was all, always from what um, the ingredients that you find on the spot. When I do my drawings, I found corn, I found uh, uh, feathers, and, and, and so I make my own nest. So it's the nest to make another egg and to let it grow and to, to let it come out. If the society allows it to come out. Mm. And that, that's where you need curators for, you know. People who start to love you, like, like your mother who said, yeah, this, is, this is great what you did, you know. <laughs> <laughs> it's something like this. <laughs> yeah, what about your, you do 